this is, yeah, I think this is day three. So it's getting, it's not bad. It's got, probably need to put a little dry shampoo in it up in the top. It's getting a little bit flat. Um, yeah, but. How I'm long does it to... take you to straighten it? It doesn't take me long. Um, to make it look good, probably half hour, 45 minutes as far as like actually blow drying and straightening it. But I also, um, I let it almost fully air dry before I do that. Because if I was to do it when it was soaking wet, it would take me forever. Yeah, I have to, for sure. I have to let mine like air dry a little bit too. Or else it would take me like a few hours. Yeah, typically what I do is I, I wash it at night and then I, I finish it in the morning. Like I'll, I'll just let it, put it up in a bun overnight and then I'll dry it in the morning and straighten it in the morning. And then it doesn't take as long. And I just got this new product too that helps with the shine, which actually did work really well. So, because I'm what like, is okay. Um, you know, I should have grabbed that too. <laughs> it's, um, what is it? It's, again, I got I got hooked on an Instagram ad, but I bought it on, on the Amazon. It's like, I, it's IG, IKGH something. Or, I don't know. It's a shine, it's a shine spray. And you spray it on while you're blow drying. And then you spray it again before you hit it with like your straightening iron. So cool. it ends up looking like almost like you got a keratin treatment, which, because my hair does look really shiny right now in comparison to what it typically does so it does um, it looks really good really well yeah it worked really really well so i was like oh okay this is cool because you know again i'm i'm going to various places for my shows so i have to think of things that i can do on my own um there's not gonna be anybody there i can't i can't get my hair done i can't get my tan done none of those kinds of things so we're gonna go into that like i have to do everything myself you know what i mean it just it's part of the the process of you know going outside of the continental us you know what i mean so that's 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 part of the fun stuff so are you thinking about wearing it straight on show day this year i am awesome I am. yeah i was gonna curl it but um the more that i see how it hits and lays on my back with it straight i like it better so i'm gonna do like a i'm gonna do volume to it and do a little bit of a curl under and that's it i'm just gonna awesome. it just do my natural hair like this is the first i was saying this is the first time i've ever been able to do just my natural hair and no extensions so i'm like praise jesus like bless my hair's grown yeah my hair's grown a lot um and like i've said before it's because of, you know when you're blonde you're bleaching it all the time and everything and i'm a natural blonde but still when you're a natural blonde you still go get bleached and highlights and all that kind of stuff so since i'm dark now all i do is just the deposit only so it doesn't damage my hair at all um and then, uh, you know, I wear it, I, I use like the silk pillowcases. I wear it in a, you know, a bun or a ponytail or something when I sleep inside of a bonnet, you know, all those kinds of things. I take the hair and skin nail vitamins, all those kinds of things. So my hair's grown. It, this is the longest it's been since I was like six years old. <laughs> wow. It looks really yeah. good. It's, it looks really healthy, which it's, is great it's, being in a prep, yeah, you know? Absolutely. Like that was, that was what I was concerned about. Like, I, I was like, this is cool when it's off season, but is it going to stick around when I start dieting and depleting down? You know what I mean? But it's actually been good. So good. Like, the length is perfect. And I'm like, and I can control my own hair a whole lot better than I can control like, you know, extensions and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. So you're four weeks out now? Four and a half. Yeah. 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 You yeah. Cause excited. you're, you're, you're less than one. <laughs> I am less than one week out. I'm days yeah, out. I know. <laughs> I know. Right. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting excited. It's, you know, it's, this is the time where like we talked about before, it's like the five week out freak out where it, stuff starts to move or it doesn't, you know, and stuff has started to move the last couple of weeks. Um, Go ahead. dropped a pound as of this morning, um, from last week. So, you know, I'm definitely cruising now and I'm, you know, I, it's like it's like a love hate because I know I'm going in the right direction, but at the same time, it's like you start seeing things like start to deflate and everything like that. And I'm like, I'm like but I know I have to before you get better. Yeah. Flat. Yeah. And I know I know I have to do that. I know it's all part of it, but it's like, damn it. <laughs> I know. I feel that right now. I'm like, where are my muscles? I just yeah. feel flabby, but it's uh -huh. part of the process. It's part of yeah. it. <laughs> how, are you, how are you feeling going into this 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 week and into the peak week? <clears throat> um. You know, Sean, it's a loaded question. <laughs> like, oops. My yeah, bad. <laughs> no, it's no, it's I mean, you know, prep is fine. You know, I'm doing my thing. I think uh, life is happening around mm. me right now. Um, yeah, Drew and I are just getting faced with some just pretty big professional decisions and life decisions. And it's all happening, of course, right around the Olympia. And we only have weeks to figure it out. Um, the past three days have been brutal uh lots mm. of tears lots of sleepless nights lots of arguments lots of deciding and conversations and 
um, all exciting things, but we know that, you know, with those big decisions, it comes a lot of turmoil um, and and fear. And um, as of last night, we've come to some really big decisions. And so we'll be kind of announcing those here, not, not today, but soon. And um, yeah, it's just, it's part of life, right? Like it's nothing that I can change the timeline on. It is what it is. It's happening. I'm, I'm up quite a bit of weight. Uh, since mm-hmm. last week, just from pure stress. Yeah. And um, it is what it is. I'm just going to keep continuing to, you know, focus on what I can. Hopefully now that the stress is coming back down, we'll start to yeah. see better trend. But all exciting things, just the last three days was a lot. So yeah. between personal and business and being an athlete, it's so hard to find that balance. But it is. It is. Well, it seems like when you've got everything going like 100 miles an hour, that's when you get hit with everything too. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, oh, like uh, you're you're always waiting for like the next shoe to drop because you know something's gonna hit. Like it always it always happens. You know, like you're saying last year at Olympia you got sick. You know what I mean? It's like something something breaks always, always. always. Yes. You know. Yes. And um, it's it's just one of those things. It's like it's like the what's the I don't I don't even know. It's like Freudian. It's a Freudian law. <laughs> Yeah, it's like when everything's going great, something's going to break. Something's going to break. And that's exactly Uh, what Drew said. He was talking to his mom like two weeks ago and he was like saying like, oh, you know, life is so good right now. And then that's when everything started to drop. And then um, on the last flight that we had, I was doing so good. I was getting IV treatments, making sure I wasn't getting sick. Drew paid extra to get on the flight early so that we could try to get the two seater because I'm really big on like not sitting around people. He boards the plane and there was already like 50 people on the plane from another flight. So he picked a seat that was a three seater um, and there was plenty of seats toward the back of the plane. And I guess this woman wanted to sit next to him. My I I call my husband the golden retriever because he is just he attracts people. So this woman sits next to him and he's like, well, my wife's coming and she kind of doesn't want people to sit next to her. She's like, I don't care. I'm sitting here. So she sat there. She was sick. And she was a large woman and she was facing me the entire flight and coughing on me the entire flight. Oh my God. So I knew I was going to get sick. I got sick three days ago. Yeah. I don't understand people like that. Like just stay home. That and also like just be courteous. Like if if you're, if you, there's plenty of other seats. If I was sick, I would get away from people. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, I would, I don't want to infect you. Like that's not my, (laughs) not my goal in life you know what i mean and you could tell she was clearly uncomfortable she was like you know like trying not to cut like i would go somewhere way far away where i could be like that people weren't judging me i don't know this is my this this is what i where i think too but when i'm in these scenarios i'm just thinking to myself am i the crazy one yeah (laughs) you know but i just i just did the same thing like i booked all my flights and stuff to japan and on the way home and things like that i'm looking at the the seating arrangements i'm like okay upgrade because i need to sit by myself i'm like i I, whatever i'll pay the extra 100 bucks or whatever it is so i can make sure i'm i've got the space that i need you know what i mean like i just that's a long time to have to be stuck next to somebody (laughs) that's why on the road to the olympia like derek lunsford like derek's like yeah but i'd rather be sitting next to him as i know he's healthy we're not going to get each other sick you know so right it's things you got to think about when you're that close to competing so yeah well this is the time frame where people do get sick because it's changing the seasons and everything's up and down with the with the weather and all that kind of stuff like i know um i I know you guys don't have that as much in florida but here it's like one day it'll be in the 70s the next day it's in the 50s you know what i mean and it's like okay pick pick a lane just pick a lane (laughs) you know we have pollen right now too really bad oh really do you guys guys have pollen right now Mm -mm. yeah like in front of our in front of our neighbor's house she's got all these trees it's literally like yellow on the on the oh, street wow. and so drew is like getting some some things too he's like this is the time of year though where i'm not sure if it's allergies the yeah. season's changing or if it's sickness yeah and florida's been a little weird too like, we woke up this morning it's beautiful it was like er, um uh, high 70s here which is cold for us yeah. um so we're starting to see a little bit of that which i'm i'm appreciating because i the the hot 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 weather we yeah. had a brutal summer brutal brutal summer so the it was hot here nice. too so i could imagine yeah, yeah, I could imagine it was probably pretty rough down there. And yeah. the funny part is, like, so we have all these trees in our front yard and backyard. It's it's pretty wooded. Um, yeah. But the last couple of weeks, they've been, like, acorns have been falling nonstop. And, and you know, we moved into this house a year and a half ago. So, like, I don't remember this happening last year. There's, like, acorns 
everywhere. everywhere. And I'm like, this didn't happen last year. Like they're literally Are they a fall- nuisance? Like they're falling out of the trees and hitting us on the head. Like I'm not even kidding. Like they're everywhere. So, so my husband looked it up and I think he said something like this happens to the trees like every, once every seven years or something like that, where they just, just saw these acorns drop. And it's just, they're literally everywhere. Like it's you, wow like you, like, we're trying to we're trying to grow grass like our whole our whole house at the yard like the people that had it before us didn't take care of any anything with the house so we've had a lot of maintenance stuff that we've had to do they didn't grow grass so we've been working on all that stuff all year and um so my it's my husband's baby like he's out there every day watering the grass and like he's moving the sprinklers like he went to left for work today he's like i need you to move my sprinklers twice while i'm gone i'm like okay okay <laughs> got babe. it i'll get right on that <laughs> i know so so he's like all about it but there's like freaking acorns all over the freaking place so i'm like how does that affect grass? the grass i assume it does i mean Me i don't too. know how, i mean I oh my gosh dan's gonna have a conundrum <laughs> if that grass gets affected <laughs> of course every seven years and it's the second year you've been in this house and it happens. I know. You don't even have I any know. forgiveness. Well, we had so many people come out and give us like all these estimates, these outrageous estimates in order to put, you know, um, like sod grass down, sod down, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's um, expensive. Our, very. And our house like, is why? like, we have a really <laughs> steep driveway. You know, like I said, we do hills on our driveway. Yeah. On hills. So when it rains, everything just comes down. And that's why mm-hmm. they said it's, it's like basically impossible to grow grass because there's no topsoil there and it just whenever it rains or whatever it just all comes down so you know so he's been out there working on it every day <laughs> doing it himself and i'm that like oh man. <laughs> he loves he freaking loves doing it though like i'm like okay whatever this is this can be your baby it's it's fine <laughs> you, you focus on that honey that's what he you're does. Great at. it's like every day like the first thing he does is goes out and, and make sure that the grass is, is the sprinklers are good and all that kind of stuff and like he's just a big kid sometimes he corrects me like i don't know if you saw my stories he bought those big animatronics for halloween no oh but i God. know you guys like to deck it out for halloween you have the we do house for it yeah we do we like i love decorations and all that kind of stuff and we have a good time with it but he bought these um these ones that like when you walk by them they like ha- like cackle at you and stuff and they're like life size right so you know one of them has the little tray for like the trick-or-treaters and everything so when you take food out of the or the candy out of the, tr- out of the tray it starts like shaking and screaming at you and everything and so that one he has it right by the door like inside the house right now he has that one right at the door so we have house cleaners that come in once a week <laughs> oh came god in yesterday these poor ladies oh my god they freaked out so bad like you didn't give them any dan warning like, no dan was like i think she peed her pants <laughs> yeah no kidding do you blame her i mean no because even i She's like i do you. double takes I, I know i'm like i know it's there and even i do double takes every time i walk past it i'm like oh shit. you think it's a yeah. person yeah Mm-hmm. Well, and it's yeah. like, you know, it's when something gets moved in your house and, you know, something's yeah. a specific way for so long and then all of a sudden it's different. You're like, whoa. <laughs> well, you know, and it's right by the front door. So, like, if you walk by it, you see it out of the corner of your eye, you think somebody's at the front door. You know what I mean? So, I've, all like, all day long, I'm like, oh, duh. <laughs> yeah, but it's still scary. <laughs> it is. It is. And I'm like, these poor ladies that came in yesterday, I feel so bad. I was like, I was like, Dan, you're going to end up giving somebody a heart attack. I can't believe you guys didn't even give them a warning. That's so funny. They're going to be <laughs> so <know>. pissed. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wow. I was like, that, oh, this just put a just... little warning on the front door next time. Remember, Halloween decorations are up. <laughs> I know. Well, I say it all the time because I'm a Virgo and then my husband's an Aries. So when you look at the, zo- the zodiac signs, Virgo is the mother of the zodiac. And Aries is the child of the Zodiac. So that very, you know, that very much describes our relationship. And it's like, he's like this little kid that's just like pushing all the buttons. And I'm <laughs> just like, oh my God. And you're the mom watching it all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm the mom. I say it all the time. I was like, I feel so bad for your mom when, when you were a kid. Because <laughs> she must have run her ragged. And he's, he always says that, um, yeah, that he, he basically don't, he, could have put his mom into an early grave just the way he was he was just a really rambunctious kid add all that kind of stuff and he's like but he said but my mom said i was her favorite because i always kept her on her toes (laughs) yeah honey she said that to everybody (laughs) i know right i know (laughs) 
we do that with my in-laws. We're like, who's your favorite? And then she's like, well, you're standing in front of me. So you. You. Yeah. Right now, yeah. at this moment, you. Yeah. Five minutes from now and your brother's asking me him. Yes, exactly. That's right. So um, so with that, um, yeah, it's been an interesting week. But things have been going good. So, good. you know, I'm getting better sleep, all that kind of stuff. We're going to go into that in a little bit. Like today's podcast, which we should have said earlier, is number eight. And we're number literally, eight. yeah, we're going to go through all the questions that have been sent in, at least most of majority of them we'll go through and answer some of them will be short answers some will be long answers you know one of the questions was about sleeping and things like that so you know we'll go into all that as well um but as far as as um stuff with you i mean i know you, you mentioned you got a lot of stuff going on so what is your what is your goal for this weekend then since things are just kind of <clears throat> all over the place at this point i'd be happy just to step on stage just to finish yeah yeah I mean, it's like I said, it's been a it's been a tremendous week. You get you guys can kind of see it in my face right now. I mean, I'm so- oh, lost you. <laughs> Things like that. <laughs> when you I'm like, when you took my ears. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, lost you. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So you guys can kind of see it in my face. I mean, that's the stress and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, I'm I uh, bef- before all of this was going on, my body was looking awesome. So if mm. we could just kind of de-stress over the next few days, I ta- had a really good talk with Jamie this morning on the phone. Um, you know, hopefully we're, we're just staying positive, you know, so yeah. I'm just going to keep controlling what I can tr- control. And um, yeah, there's there's five Olympians, I think, that are in a hurricane this weekend. It's going to be a great, great show. So I'm super excited and just want to bring my best best I can for yeah. this week. You know, and regardless of what happens, like I've said this before, you know, no matter what happens in these weeks for you guys, it's a it's a win, because even if stuff goes wrong, you can take data and you can apply it for the Olympia, you know? Yes. Um, yeah. You know, I was talking about that girl too, uh, from Ukraine, uh, Valeria. You know, she just won. Um, yep. Whatever show Out that there. was this week. Yep. Yeah. So she's she's qualified for next year, and she's doing the the show this coming weekend and stuff like that too. And I saw a few comments were like, "Why is she continuing to compete?" I'm like, "Why not?" I'm like, you know, at this point, she can test a few things, you know, get some feedback going into the Olympia. You know, she's one of those ones where people talk about her a lot because she wins so many shows overseas, but then she comes here and doesn't do as well. Um, she's got a phenomenal frame. She's a be- She's got a beautiful look, but she's just missing a lot of those details, you know, and you can see finally she's starting to apply those details. So regardless of what happens this coming week for her, she can take some she can try some things, data points and stuff and apply it when she gets here for the Olympia based on what her feedback is at this coming weekend show. So, you know, same thing with you, regardless of what happens, I mean, you can, you can apply whatever it is you learn. Yeah. Yeah. And I was watching your live the other night too, when you were going over kind of uh, the Olympia and where they're from and um, you know, the people asking why do multiple shows? And I think it, especially just like you said, it's important for the girls that are outside of the USA because it is different competition outside of the mm-hmm. USA and the Olympia most of the time is in the USA. And we tend to have a little bit of, um, harder shows and, and, um, harder criteria. So yeah. for the girls that really want to do well here in the States, I think it's important for them to do multiple shows and do multiple shows in the States as well. That right. way they're getting that feedback and then they know when they're home and they have all this time to improve, they know what they need to be doing. That's why Evie does so well mm-hmm. in the States and outside of the States, because she's done her research on doing shows in the United States and kind of has been able to morph her physique that way. Um, yep. so it is, it's, a, that's, you know, multiple shows for that person. They're probably trying to get data. They're probably trying yeah. to learn to study and whether they're winning the show or not, it's, you can still improve. That's right. the world of bodybuilding. So yep. I, I yep. don't mind it at all. You know, and Phoebe's the same way too. You know, Phoebe was, uh, over in, in the UK, but then she started coming here and all of a sudden she started doing better because she started applying the criteria here. When you're up against tougher competition, you're going to get better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if yeah. you're just always putting yourself into a safe pool, you're just never going to be pushed. You're never going to be pushed to the next level. You have to put yourself up against tougher people in order to, in order to be, in order to grow, in order to get better. You yeah. Know? Iron sharpens iron. That's right. That's yeah. right. Absolutely. So, you know, I say that a lot about like training environment and stuff like that too. Like, um, you know, I go to a couple of different gyms. There's one that's right down the street from my house and I go there because it's convenient, but the shop is where I go to, I went there today. I go to the shop whenever I'm trying to train lower body and any other time I can get out there because it's a better environment. There's more, you know, bodybuilding, CrossFit, powerlifting, you know, strongman, all those kind of people all train at that gym. So it's like you push harder because you're around that energy. At least I yeah. do. I push harder when I'm around that energy. I can't like I 
I push, I push okay <laughs> at Planet Fitness, but really it's more like I'm doing shoulders and I'm doing cardio at Planet Fit Fitness and that's about it. Maybe chest, you know, that's it. If I have a body part that I need to be progressively getting better at, like my glutes and like my legs, I want to go to a place where I'm going to have the energy pushing me. So that's why I go there. Some people, doesn't matter. For me, it yeah. does. For me, it does. I want to go to, I want to go someplace where I'm looking at people being like, okay, if she can do it, I can do it. You yeah. Know what I, I mean? just had a client actually check in this morning and she was like, listen, like bodybuilding is a really lonely sport right mm -hmm. now. I'm working out. I'm working out at my apartment gym. I think I need to go yeah. train at a commercial gym just so that I can be around that energy. And it's true. You know, some days I just kind of want to put my headphones in and my gym is a boutique gym. So sometimes it's just really, really quiet. And I love that. I love being in there by myself mm -hmm. and feeling like I have the, the space. But sometimes I don't want to be in there by myself. I want someone around me training that I can find that push or find that intensity. And there is like that peacock complex. Not that I'm peacocking in the gym, but everybody likes to just be around each other and feel supported by each other. And I think it's it goes day Absolutely. to day, especially when you're in prep. <laughs> <laughs> like what kind of environment mm -hmm. you want. Um, but it is, it's true, you know, and that's what I told my client. Yeah, absolutely. Especially the further you get into your an, an off season, a long term off season, it's going to be important to find those relationships and friends and something that keeps you coming back. It gets boring and mundane when you're kind of just by yourself doing it day in and day out. Absolutely. Yeah. And you got nothing like, I, I don't know, for me too, I'm just like, when I, when I know people around me watching, like, I, I just perform better because I don't want to look like a slacker. Yes. <laughs> You know, I don't want to look like a, sl a slacker. I want to look like I'm, I'm you're doing hard. Yeah. And you that's what, what I mean? that's, a, that's kind of what I meant by like peacocking. Like you're, you don't want to like be like, oh, I'm a bodybuilder, yeah. but like I barely lift any weight. Right. You want to be able to right. push. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to do one yeah. more rep. I'm going to do a little, another five pounds, you know, whatever it might be. But it's just like, you just push a little bit harder. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, so we got hurricane coming up and then, um, so Olympia is two and a half weeks away. So there's one week in between. Is there a show next week? Or yeah. No? So there is the clash and there is only pro wellness at that one. The next week. That's right. Cause I have a, I have a girl doing that show. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be crazy three weeks. So we got the hurricane, then we got the clash and then right into, and clashes in Orlando and then right into the Olympia the following weekend. Yeah. So this isn't actually kind of is a question that I get a lot, but the reason why these questions have been coming in from, for me a lot is I just did a, live feed last week well not a live feed but pre-recorded feed about wellness and the, the the direction that it's going and stuff um so in your opinion what do you feel about the direction of wellness and what do you feel is um why it's not growing um th things things the, along those lines what is your what is your two cents in that in that arena there um <laughs> it's a loaded question no it right? is and this is a conversation <laughs> drew myself higher ups at fit body we've all been having um the wellness mm -hmm. criteria is very hard right now, um, especially with the mm -hmm. amateurs. And um, unfortunately, it's what they're picking. You know, it's what they're picking at the pro level. Obviously, that is our standard. Um, now, I think that the wellness criteria was created based off of a different type of individual, a different genetic profile. Um, you know, it was it started in Brazil. And mm -hmm. these girls had years on us before the wellness category oh. actually ended up in the United States. While we knew that it was coming, we didn't really know. If, we, we knew it was coming eventually. We didn't know when, et cetera. It finally came out in 2021, I believe, end of 2020. Um, uh, we're getting a lot of applications right now for wellness girls in the amateurs. And these girls right now, some coaches have them doing a lot of mm -hmm. performance enhancers in order to try to put on the size that they are rewarding at the pro card and pro level. I cannot lay my head down at night as a coach with some of the things that I know these girls are having to do in order to gain that size. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously per person, this is a personal decision. Sometimes you have a conversation with an athlete and they're willing to do anything under the sun and genetically their body is a little bit better for wellness and you know whatever that looks like however for the majority they're not willing to do that nor are they willing to carry that kind of body fat that they have to in the off season in order to continue to grow and get as big as they need to so 
most of the conversations that I have right now, I'm honestly telling girls not to do wellness, which is sad yeah. because yeah. I think that the category is going to end up dying out um, or just be overrun by women that are not from the United States. Yes. Um, it's sad to see that, especially with numbers and bodybuilding in general kind of going down at shows and whatnot. I don't really know how to protect that. They really can't anymore. They can't really reverse what they've done yep. um, and what they've awarded in the past. So it's it's tough. It's yep. extremely tough right now, that division. And I love that division. I love that look. I, I love that look when it's done right and when it's done yes. healthy. Yep. But that's not what they're awarding, unfortunately. Yep. And that's essentially what I what I said. You know, it's essentially it. I mean, it was it was built off of a, off of a specific genetic body type, and if you don't have that specific genetic body type, you have to do other things in order to get there. And regardless of what you do, when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, that specific genetic body type is still going to win. Yes. You know, so it's like, okay, do you push your body to this limit that you kind of don't even want to push your body to and just get crushed anyway, when the resilience come, come around, <laughs> you know, um, you see that a lot with the girls that are just not competing anymore. You know, the girls like Yurishna and Babby and things like that, all beautiful frames, beautiful physiques, but they don't want to have to put the size on that they have, they would have to, they don't want to get the conditioning they would have to, you know, it's one thing to put the size on. It's another thing to get the conditioning with it. Um, you know, especially as a female, that's really, really hard to do. It is. It's really hard on your body. It's really hard on your body. And, um, and for what, like said, what reward? Correct. What was right. risk versus reward? And, and the two names that you just said, you're talking about girls that are already, let's say more than halfway there yep. and they don't even want to, pr- oh, they don't want to go, they don't want to go from that 70, 80% to a hundred percent. That's right. So okay. how am I as a coach talking to an amateur that needs to go from 10% wellness to a hundred that's a hefty yep. conversation. Yep. I mean, it's the same, it's the same way that, um, you know, if you have a female bodybuilding went, you know, you look back at how this stuff started with Corey Everson and things like that. And those women way back in the day when female bodybuilding first started, they wouldn't even be competitive on a bikini level at this point. Right. Absolutely. Look at myself, you know, I won my pro card in figure. I would not even be close to being competitive in the figure division, even on the national level, like not even close. Not even yep. close, yep. and uh, let alone in in in, in uh, pro level. You know what I mean. <clears throat> and the same thing happens with figure. It's like you've got a few genetic anomalies that are amazing, and everybody else is trying to catch up. Yeah. So it co- becomes a point where you're like, well, I just don't want to push my body to that point because I'm not I'm not born like that anyway. So right. even if I do push myself to that, they're still going to beat me. So why why am yeah. I going to do that? Yeah. I think I think too the women's physique division has severely um, been affected by that as well. I mean, some of these women's physique look like women's bodybuilding, and the, just sure the, the crossover between the the uh, divisions and the female side is it's tough. It's really yep. really tough. I know that I know in the back office there's been talks of them trying to really kind of hone in, and I think mm-hmm. the Olympia is going to be good this year. I think that they're keeping this in mind and mm-hmm. they're really going to try to be mindful of the standards that they're setting. And, you know, they're doing a lot of stuff right now with the men's divisions and yes. changes with the men's divisions and making sure to get those ironed out. And I wouldn't be surprised if women are next. I would, I would yeah. be, um, I would not be shocked if we start to see some height and weight and things like that. So they could try to control the women's divisions a little bit yeah. more. Um, I don't think it's coming anytime soon. I think they're going to start with the men, see how that goes and then yeah. play into the women. Um, but it is, I think that there just needs, we, we just need to be better. We need to be better at our standards and what the category is and sticking with those categories. And we've talked about this before on the podcast. Sometimes we just have to pick what shows up that day. No yeah. one really hits that criteria perfectly. Yeah. But that's just what showed up. And if that's the biggest, leanest person, then unfortunately, that's what we have to pick, even though it's not necessarily what the criteria was. Mm -hmm. Um, That's where it's hard. It's hard as in those female divisions. There's so much that plays into effect. It's not just who's the biggest and leanest on stage, you know. Well, it's the same even in the the men's. I was, you know, I'm part of a bunch of these Facebook groups and stuff, too. And I saw a guy post um, these two back shots. One was of him and one was of another guy. And I don't know how the how the placings actually went on stage, but he was like from this back shot, you know, who would you choose as the winner? And it was for classic, classic physique, not bodybuilding, but classic physique. And everybody in the comments was left, right, left, right, left, right. Like people were, they couldn't pick the winner from looking at these two shots. It wasn't like it was really clear as day. And the difference was, is the guy on the left 
had a better shape, roundness, fullness, all that kind of stuff. But the guy on the right was better conditioned. The guy on the right didn't have a great shape, especially for classic. He would have been better off in bodybuilding versus classic, right? The guy on the on the on the left though had the classic physique shape and look but people were automatically a lot of them were saying the guy on the right because of the conditioning the guy on the right because of the the more muscle it's like but you got to remember that's classic physique that's not bodybuilding we're looking at classic so if it's classic then it's the guy on the left shape correct roundness yes fullness yes Yep. yep. And that right there is the issue with with judging. And it starts at the low, lower levels, too, because a lot of the people that come in and judge at the lower levels are not like hugely trained. You know, they've done it for a few years or whatever, your local level judges, and they don't actually pay attention as deep dive as some of these other judges do at the pro level and Olympia level and things like that. So it starts at that level sometimes, and you're automatically drawn to that person that's more conditioned, but that's not the criteria. You know, you're automatically drawn to that person that has more muscle, but that's not the criteria. You know, you got to remember what the criteria is. Just because that person's bigger and harder does not mean that they should win. Nope. We talked about this in our, in our podcast last week, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and, and my, like, if I would have saw that picture, my first thing I would have done is went and seen who the judging panel was. Yeah. Because we talked about that too. Sometimes judges, you know, one judge refers, prefers shape and you know, muscle and fullness yep. and the other one yep. would prefer conditioning no matter what the mm-hmm. division is. That's right. Um, yep. But that's where, that's where, like we talked about, a good coach is going to tell you, Hey, this is your division. This is the judging panel. Mm-hmm. This is your panel and your show to be at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. True. So with that, let's get into some questions that have actually, that have been sent in. Um, okay. <clears throat> Cause that the wellness one was one of them too. So let's start with, um, that was a great one. And yeah. one that keeps coming up. So that was a good yep. one to start with. Um, well, that's a the the how what what in your opinion is how, how to be coachable? What is, what in your opinion makes somebody coachable? <sighs> how to be coachable? I think you know when you come to the point where you are ready to hire a coach, mm-hmm. you have to learn to accept help. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of the times what girls do or clients that, you know, hire me that, or that I've seen is that they're coming from a different coach or from a different experience. And they're constantly comparing this experience to their previous experience. And I think we have to realize that when we are at a place of asking for help, clearly what we have done was not working, whether we were running it ourselves or with someone else. So I think being coachable is being open-minded and Mm -hmm. being willing to listen And also understanding that I say this phrase all the time, there's a hundred ways to skin a cat as long as the cat gets skinned and whoever you're choosing to skin your cat, you have to learn how to have pretty fast trust in them quickly. You know, hiring a coach is, is you saying or acknowledging, I trust you Mm -hmm. from our console call and everything that you said and all of my questions that I asked you, you gave me what I thought to be the best response for me. And now I want you to guide me there, however it may be. That's not to say that you shouldn't question things in your plan and you shouldn't ask questions. And if somebody, a coach suggests you to do something that you shouldn't say why or what is this, but it means that you should be listening. And, Mm -hmm. and, you know, literally the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting the same result. So if you're trying to do the same thing all the time and expecting something to change, it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with all of that. Um, And I would say also, like, like you just said, having the trust and that comes from doing your due diligence ahead of time. You know, like you said, during the, during the consult call, you're asking all of those questions. You know, I've been in the sport for a long time. Jamie's been my coach for three years now. When we sat down and had our consultation initially, like I already knew Jamie, but I wanted to sit down and talk to her. We talked for like an hour and a half, right? Yeah. And I asked her everything because I've been through the mill when it comes with, with coaches. You know, I've, I've had every method of anything you could think of, <laughs> you know? So I asked all those questions ahead of time, right? Now, that said, I've been around for a while, so I know what to ask and what not to. You know, if you don't, then you, you do have to kind of, you have to sit down and figure out what your goals are and kind of work backwards and figure out what you're willing to do, what you're not, and talk to the, that coach and say, hey, can you get me to this point? And, and if, they, if they tell you no, or they tell you something that maybe you didn't want to hear, you still have to listen, right? Like, I think a lot of people go into the sport with unrealistic expectations, like they're going to go and get their pro card no matter of a year. 
You know what I mean? And it's like, well, you've never lifted a weight before in your life. So we got to sit down. We've had this conversation here on this podcast. We've got to go through an off season. We've got to go through all this stuff. Make sure that you're hiring a coach that's telling you those tough answers. You know, it's not just telling you what you want to hear because what's going to happen is, is that they tell you, oh, no, we can go put you into a prep right now and get you on stage and you should be on the national level at the end of the year, blah, blah, blah. They're just telling you what you want to hear. So you got you got to be able to have that discernment of what you want to hear versus what you need to hear. <laughs> and and like you said, as far as being coachable is concerned, doing what you're being told to do, right? And that's not to say that you have to follow blindly, like you said, not to say you have to follow blindly. You can ask questions. The coach should be able to tell you why they're having you do something. But at the end of the day, you still do it. Like if they can give you a good reason why they have you doing something, do it. You know, yes. if it's if it's not a good reason, then that, that, that's a problem. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah, it should be a good reason. It should be a good reason. Um, but the, And the coach should be able to give you a reason. If the coach can't give you a reason, there's a problem there, too. Right? It's a red flag. Yeah. I tell my staff yeah, all the time, I don't flag. care how you do something. I don't care mm -hmm. how you do something if it's completely different than me. But if I ask you why, you mm -hmm. need to have a reason why why yeah. and then if you tell me a reason why cool i'm open-minded to it as long as you have your why behind it and yep. i tell clients all the time when they sign up with me you should be able to ask me why for anything that's on this plan and i should have an answer for you if not mm -hmm. that's a red flag absolutely yep absolutely Is why did i put this cardio in there why did yeah. i tell you to eat this amount of food why did I do you? There is a why for every single part of that program. Absolutely. The same as it's true. Like I just do posing coaching, you know, it's the same thing with posing. I have girls that come to me all the time that are like, they want to do this hair flip and they want to do this. They want to do that. And I'm like, no, it's working on you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing any of that stuff. Cause the judges don't care. If you can't hit a good front pose and you can't hit a good back pose, they don't care what you do in between. I can always give them a why as to why we're doing something. You know, yes. if they want to do a certain thing, and I'm telling them no. I tell them why we're not doing it. You know, and that makes it tangible. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And, and I, I can show them important. examples. Yeah, I can show them examples. I'm like, you know, if, if you don't understand it, go watch this video or go look at these photos or whatever it might be. I can give you a reason why we're doing it. You know, it's not just me telling you to, to, to stand on one leg because I want you to look like a peacock. Or not a peacock, a flamingo. <laughs> you said peacock yeah. earlier. <laughs> so I got peacock in my head. Yeah. <laughs> I we know you meant from the yeah, bird family. Flamingo. The, the flamingo, the, the, one of these birds. <laughs> <laughs> You're wearing pink. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. Yes. Um, but yeah, there's, there should be a why. And as far as, like you said, I think the number one thing with being coachable is just actually listening and doing what you're told. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's even worse for people that have been around the sport for a long time because they think they know everything. They think yes. they know it already. And they're not willing to take a step back and say, well, maybe I'm doing something wrong. You know, um, that that's probably harder than even the new people because the new people just kind of like, okay, <laughs> let's, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> Yeah, honestly. Yeah. That goes too <laughs> to being coachable is like acknowledging when something is a problem or an issue yeah. and bringing it to the coach's attention and saying, this is an issue for me. I need help. I just yep. had a girl check in today. She's like, I, I have not told you this, but I am drinking too much caffeine in my off season. Mm -hmm. I am drinking two energy drinks a day, three cups of coffee. I have no, no idea why I'm telling you right now because I'm making a commitment to myself to cut down on the caffeine today yeah. and I need the accountability. That's someone who's coachable. She yeah. she is. I wouldn't have known that. She brought it to my attention. Mm -hmm. She's making making it now known to me. And now I have that written on my back office spreadsheet every week. I'm going to check in with her about her caffeine intake. That's someone yeah. who's coachable. You know, so and because coaches sometimes are not going to get the whole story. I would say yeah. from feedback I've gotten from my husband and other fit body coaches that have lo looked at my intake process and my check in process, I ask a lot of questions for my check ins. I get a good amount of data, mm -hmm. but there's always going to be something that's left out if the yeah. athlete wants it to be left out, yep. unless yep. they bring it to the coach's well, attention. So I appreciate that. And that'll go into the next, another question that we had, which was sleeping tips, like things to get better sleep, because that's a, a big data point that a lot, a lot of coaches, um, A, don't ask about, or B, don't know I enough know. about. And it's huge. It's sleep huge. is sleep so is underrated for recovery yeah. in our sport. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Getting seven Absolutely. to eight hours of just some good, solid sleep is so underrated. Yep. And I know we've talked about this a little bit before, but I wanted to go into it a little bit more. Um, I was 
sleeping okay. You know, I've had ups and downs, things like that. Uh, for a couple of weeks, I was having a really hard time because every night I was getting woken up by my my dog or my husband, one of the two. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, okay, once I'm up, I'm up and it's not just not going away. So um, I still do my cigar at night, you know, before I go to bed. That just helps me wind down. It's starting to get colder out, so I don't do it every night, but I've been doing it most nights. <laughs> oh, my God. If, but if it's colder out, I'm going to be outside more. I know. Well, I, I, last night I went out in my, you know, winter jacket. It was actually nice. It was like 58 or something. So I wasn't cold, cold, but it was like, it was, it was nice. I, I enjoy that. You know, I put a blanket on my lap and I just chill. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, for me, it's relaxing. Right. And that's how I wind down. Um, I switched over my sleep supplements. I went off of the, the, the raw nutrition drink for right now. Um, just cause again, you talk about the caffeine thing. I just want to kind of let my body not need it. Um, I'll probably, if I, if I start having more issues with sleep, I'll go back to it again, but right now I'm okay. Um, so I'm gonna stay off it until I, until I need it again. Um, I am doing a sleep gummy, which I would grab those. Um, again, I'm not affiliated or anything like that, but Calm Peak, you, you used them before. I've heard that them. Shows I've heard the of them. I see them at shows yeah. all the time. Yeah. That shows all the time. That's how, that's how I met them in the first place was at Tampa Pro. Um, but yeah, this is just a sleep gummy. So I do one of these, one of these a night and what's that in there? Me to get. Um, it's like calm friendly. magnesium. Yeah. It's, it's CBD. Yeah. It's, um, CBD, CBN and, uh, okay. Yeah. 10 milligrams CBN, 25 milligrams CBD per gummy. Um, you just take one. Yep. I just take one. I took two one night and it actually was too much. I was groggy the next day. So I just, mm. I just tried it to see no one, one is plenty. Um, but yeah. That's, that's it. It's just, it's just CBD. And I don't even, to be honest, perfectly frank with you, I don't even know what CBN is. It's just in a sleep gummy. <laughs> I don't know what the difference is. I do know that it, it's a branch of CBD. Something. Yeah. Removed it's something or, like yeah. that. And it's yeah. the sleep component. Okay. Okay. Well, that, that makes sense then. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I know take one of those. something to do with that. Yeah. I take one of those. Um, if you don't have like blackout curtains or something like that in your, in your house, um, get like a sleep mask. Like I have one, one of these sleep masks. I have one too. The pressure on the eyes is mm -hmm. so nice. Yep. This one has yes. a little, it's a little open here. So you yep. can wear it and put it, put over your um, lashes and everything like that too. And it doesn't press down on your eyes. And in general, I need my, my room to be cooler too, which is another reason why I was having a hard time sleeping in the, in the main bedroom. So I go over to the guest bedroom. Whenever I'm having issues with sleep, I go sleep in the guest bedroom. Um, and then I don't have my dog waking me up. I don't have my husband waking me up. I don't have any of those issues. I just <laughs> sleep there. So, um, you know, when it comes down to it, when you're in prep, you got to make some decisions sometimes and recovery is important. You know, as much as I want to sleep in my main bed on my mattress and all that kind of stuff, if, it, if it's going to affect me getting sleep and getting my full eight hours, I got to make decisions. So yeah. that's what I did too. You know, yeah. since I've, since I've done that, I've had, I've had very restful, non-interrupted sleep. So I'm in the guest bedroom until prep's over with. <laughs> it's funny. I've considered that. I mean, with all the stress going on, like Drew can't sleep right now. And yeah. he, when he, he's tossing and turning, I cannot sleep. So Same. my sleep has been affected. So I, I, I understand that completely. I've thought for, the, for a few nights, maybe I should go somewhere else or sleep in the guest room. However, we yep. have a sleep aid on our bed, which if you guys are not uh, aware, it's it's a great product. Um, it's it is expensive. Drew and I actually waited like three years to buy it, and then we got it on a, on a sale. Um, but it uh, it heats the bed, it cools okay. the bed, and then it does everything that the Aura Ring does. So it attracts um, your sleep, your um, H. SV score, uh, breath mm -hmm. rate, things like that. Um, and it's amazing. I mean, uh, Drew just literally asked me this morning, he's like, do you think that the sleep eight was worth it this summer? And I said, absolutely. It cools yeah. your bed. Um, yeah. And when you're in prep, you know, you can get really, really cold. You can get really hot. So it has definitely kept, kept the temperature. So I want to sleep in my own bed just because of the sleep eight. But yeah. with all the stress going on, it's hard with my husband sleeping next to me and tossing and turning. He's been moving to the couch a little bit more when he knows he's restless. So thanks, honey. Um, <laughs> but yes, you know, just the simple things like you said, blackout curtains, getting mm -hmm. off your phone within 30 minutes before yeah. bed, getting that blue light out of your face, making yep. sure that the temperature is good. Some people like to do like a warm bath or like a hot tub or mm -hmm. something, just kind of bring down that energy. Yep. Um, 
it's 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 very simple but yeah. just like a morning routine i believe in a nighttime routine mm -hmm. you know brushing yeah. your teeth doing your skin getting into bed at a certain time putting your phone on the charger at a certain time you know taking yep. your sleep gummies at a certain time and just trying to get on that consistent schedule bodybuilders thrive off routine and schedule our yeah. bodies love that um i also take gummies before bed especially deep in prep mm -hmm. um you know, melatonin is is great for someone that's never kind of done a gummy before or just yeah. kind of needs a little something, something. Just start with the small melatonin, NyQuil Z. Um, my husband actually does really well just straight ashwagandha, okay. um, starting with like an ashwagandha supplement or like a calm or a sleep supplement, mm -hmm. um, starting with those things. But yep. I, I agree with you. I think that getting seven, eight hours of sleep is so underrated and it's great for recovery. It's great for sleep, uh, stress. It's good for building muscle and not something that we focus on enough. Yes. And so you mentioned the aura ring. Do you have a iPhone watch? I do. Okay. Cause I, that's what I use for my sleep. Um, okay. You wear yours sleep. to bed then? Yes. Yep. Okay. And there's a sleep app. So it's, um, it's through iPhone. It's, uh, let me pull it up. I don't know if we can see it. You can see right here. This is the, it looks like, so you can see it. It looks like this right here. Just this little. Oh, yeah. I've moon. never seen that. So that's tied to your watch. Yep. It's sleep plus plus through iPhone. Right. Okay. And then it, it tracks everything. Like this is my, this is my sleep for the last week. So I've been in the green for everything basically, which is great because if you look down, if you look down here, I mean the red and the orange and, and the yellow. The, oh, wow. <laughs> So yeah, like the, like really bad, like really, really bad. So, wow. <laughs> so like I said, the last, last week or two, um, I've been taking control of that by going, like I said, all these little things going in the back guest bedroom and things like that too. I don't Good. sleep well when I'm at shows and traveling either, you know? So, um, mm -hmm. I haven't done that in, in, in a little bit. So that's been helping. The fact that I haven't been traveling is also helping. But yeah, I, everything gets tracked through here. So my phone, when, as soon as my phone goes on to sleep mode at night, it gets tracked through the, the watch and through that app. So yeah. that it, it immediately, it tracks when you get up. Like if I, if I have to get up and go to the bathroom or something like that, it tracks all of it. So, um, so I can see if I'm actually getting restful sleep and deep sleep too. So, and I uh, do believe, I don't know if you, you, you think this too, those scores really do tell me a good, um, predictability of how I'm going to feel that day. Yes. So mm -hmm. people ask all the time, like, is a sleep eight worth it? Is the aura ring worth it? I think so. Because I know yeah. when I look on that app and it says, Hey, listen, you didn't really have a great night's sleep last night. And I'm like, you know what? I am a little groggy or I do feel like I could take a rest day today. I do yeah. think that it's worth it and that the technology is there. I've been wanting the aura ring. I just haven't got one, especially with having to sleep eight. That is something I want to get, especially going into my next off season, because it's mm -hmm. great with cycle tracking yeah. and the body temperature. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I just think it's, it's a very simple tool that you can use that gives us so much more data. And if you're someone like me that loves data, that loves yep. kind of seeing things and putting pieces together about your body and being in tune with your body, which I'm so in tune with and love that. I think, I think they're worth it hands down. Yep. And the other part of that too, is like, I, you just don't know where, where the correlation is sometimes until you look back on it. Like, you know, for a while I was saying I wasn't dropping weight, wasn't dropping weight, wasn't dropping weight. And that was all that time frame where my sleep was fucked up. And now, now that my, my sleep is normal, guess what? I'm dropping a pound a week at least. I was going to say gonna... from where that green started, I was like, Hey, that's when you started to say you were dropping weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's amazing mm -hmm. how quickly that happens. Right. So yeah. it's like, you start putting those things together. Sometimes it's not even about what you're doing in your cardio. It's not what you're doing in your workouts, not what you're doing in your diet. It's what you're doing with your sleep. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, it's important to get all that, to get all that in for sure. Um, yes. So the next question that I've had is with the DIY tan. So I know we talked about this a little bit. Um, I'm not a DIYer and I know you're not either. I'm a sprayer. So yeah, the only experience I have is with pro tan, but I like liquid sunries. Yeah. So yeah. I'm very interested Same. to hear your experience of what you've done over the last week. Cause I know you've been kind of playing with that. Yeah. Because for Hawaii and for Japan, there's no uh, liquid sunrise affiliates there. So I have to figure something else out. And the biggest thing for me, like I'm so pale skinned, this is even with still liquid sunray still on me. Too. This is how pale I am right now. Yeah. And um, and I, protein for me just doesn't work. It just doesn't get me dark enough. I don't like the, the color on me, that kind of thing. It just is what it is. It's a pretty color for like a regular suntan, but as far as stage is concerned, it just doesn't work for me. I need to get darker. Um, 
and even at that, I think if I was to hand apply liquid sun rays, I don't think it would be dark enough and I don't think it would work for me. So I was like, I've got to figure out how to do this with a spray tan, with a spray spray gun. So Marilyn gave me a few uh, tips and things like that. And I tried it this weekend. First thing I did is, um, and I didn't skin prep. So if I had skin prep, I think it would have went on even smoother than what it did. But even, even still, it didn't go on bad. So I put a layer of the competition bronzer on by hand on Friday, on Friday night. Um, okay. before I went to bed and then I slept and I slept in it when I got up in the morning, um, it looked okay. So I was like, all right, I'm going to keep this and I'm gonna go ahead and spray, uh, a layer on top. Well, that it was my first time using the spray gun, which I have the spray gun sitting here too. Um, yeah, I'm curious one. because you yeah. sprayed yourself, right? I just got this on Amazon. That looks um, small. It is. And it's hands-free. So you just have to charge the battery and everything. And it's, Oh Here. shoot! So wow, that's like that is very cool. So this comes off, and this is your battery. Looks like a little Dyson. Yep. So this is your battery. Okay. You can charge this. Um, so I did one coat over top uh, of the competition bronzer, and I just didn't. It was just splotchy. So I left it for like an hour just to see if it would kind of even out, and it didn't really even out. So I went and I rinsed it. Um, once I rinsed it, I looked pretty good. Like it was, you know, just like when you rinse the tan off, it looked pretty good. So I was like, okay. So then I went and I grabbed the, she gave me a bottle of 50, 50, which is the mix, um, which is used if you have like tricky skin, which obviously I do. So I use that. Yep. So I use that and I put a, a coat on now the key with the hard parts, which is your back doing it yourself and your back. Um, this thing sprays pretty well upside down and everything. So it's not a, it's not a problem. Like you can, I can get underneath my hamstrings and my glutes and all that kind of stuff. I can get all that, but, um, it still gets a little bit splotchy. So I have one of these rollers, it's bare, mm. uh, bareback. You can get it on cool. Amazon. This is a, this is a collapsible. So stick it right in wow. your like that. Perfect. Yeah. So this I used to just roll out any splotchiness from the from the spray tan from the spray spray okay. gun. So I did one coat of the 5050. Um and it was pretty dark. It was it was not bad. So I was like, well, let me go ahead and put another coat over top of it and just see what it looks like. So I didn't do my full body with a second coat. I just did my my stomach and my um my hamstrings and my glutes with the second coat. Just kind of left my upper body alone. I just wanted to see the difference. Um my upper body takes tan better anyway because it's a little drier, I guess, for whatever reason. Um and that's what you guys saw, like if you watched my stories. Was I was going to ask. Coats. So at what point? Okay, did you yeah, post? That was the two okay. coats. That was the and two you coats. Were dark. You were yes, dark. I was very dark. Um, yeah. And it was still in even what you guys saw in the video, which I should probably post that whole video because I do have it. But um, even that was still not quite like completely dried. Once it dried and like settled over the next like two hours, it looked a lot better. It actually settled in a lot better. Um, so I was like, Hey, for my first time, this came out really good. So I'm going to do it one more time. And just with, um, kind of the, the, the things that I learned myself and just see how it, see how it looks the second time through. Cause I think what I'll do is I'll probably, you know, skip the, the morning bronzer coat that I didn't rinse off. I'll just rinse when I get up. Um, not worry about obviously putting that bronzer coat in the morning. And then once I've rinsed, then I'll go and I'll do the two coats on top. Um, and just see how it comes out at that point. I think that that will be, that will be the right solution. And again, it, just, it was just a matter of kind of getting used to using the gun and stuff like that too. The biggest thing I was concerned about, like I said, is trying to get underneath my glutes and all that kind of stuff. So I literally just bent over and looked at myself in the mirror <laughs> like this underneath and it, it just, it, it worked. I mean, and then, like I said, wherever wow. I had splotchiness, I just used the roller to roll it out. Um, that roller is key. Like I, there's no way I could have done it without the roller. It would have been, it would have had splotchiness all over the place. Um, so that's really, really important that you get the roller if you're going to try this, but you know, Something again, I think else after, too is the makeup brush that you can use for your joints to kind of blend oh, yeah, yeah. out. Yep. So I use a makeup brush when I do DIY, like on my wrist. So I'll like bring the tan to my wrist and then I'll just use a makeup brush to blend yep. it down into my hand and on, and on my ankles. Okay. That way you don't have yep. those blunt lines, Yep. but then you're also not painting you know yeah. so so um focused on the hands because that's yep. where you start to get the weird hands yep. um so yeah makeup brush get a little makeup brush okay for those see i do that but I, I use the roller to do that so yeah the roller works for that too so you perfect have to get a second a second uh, product and she did send me a small roller which i could 
use backstage or something like that. But I would recommend getting a big one because again, getting your back, like, so back, when I was doing, this, glutes. yeah, when I was doing the spray, like I bent over and I did the spray like this. So it kind of hit the top of my shoulders and then fell down. And then I would hit the roller with it and just even it out. And then I would, again, same thing over here, just kind of sprayed it. So it would fall on me and then hit it with the roller again. So okay. I, you know, the good thing about being bikini is that we have our hair down our back. So the back isn't incredibly important. You still want to be even. a little you forgiveness wanna, there. Yeah. But there's, yeah. a, there's, a, you have a little bit of leeway. You have a little bit of leeway Correct. that you don't have otherwise. So, um, again, my, my biggest concern was the glutes and hamstrings, which I was able to get pretty well. So, and I think, again, I think once I've had a little bit of time for skin prep, I think it'll be better as well. At least I didn't, I didn't prep my skin at all. I just went and did it when she sent it to me. So I just wanted to see how to work the gun and all that kind of stuff anyway. It's really um, cool how like confident you feel with yeah. it, with it really only doing it one time and knowing mm -hmm. that you didn't really do a hundred percent and you're feeling really good because to me, I know we talked about this, the tan is just such a stressor, you know, is it going to be right? And it, and it needs to yep. be right because if it's muddy or if it, if you know, your, your uh, one part of your body is darker than another part, it just throws the entire look off completely. So while this seems like a very small thing to talk about, it's actually a big it's part huge. of your polish. It's huge. So I'm really glad that you found something that works for you with being so far away, you know, and not having well, someone. And here's to, the other to thing you. too. I was like, you know, I've had some bad sprayers before. Me too. <laughs> I've had some bad sprayers and you're just kind of stuck. You know, it's like right. either you, you get nervous when the don't. girl's teaching her and they're like, hey, you want to spray this one? And you're like, no, don't spray yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. So like that, like the, the, the simple fact of knowing I could jump in the shower, rinse it off and try it again. That yeah. actually was like a stress release for me when I was doing it. This Peace weekend. of mind. Yeah. I was like, well, the, the, I, I, and I said that to myself, it doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look great either. Let me just go rinse and see what happens. And I went and rinsed and it looked a thousand times better. And I was like, oh. I kind of like this. <laughs> yeah. And, that's, you know, that's important to think too. Like it, like <laughs> rinsing is yeah. it's, it's a way to clean the tan. And I know that yeah. sounds counterintuitive and like the, you know, you always hear like, don't get water on the tan, but if it's off, like if you go into prejudging and you started sweating and then you're like yeah. really, really splotchy, 99% of the time, the tanning company is going to tell you to go rinse, come mm -hmm. back and go get a fresh coat. And that seems crazy, but it does. It just kind of gets all that collected stuff that, you know, that just doesn't look right and just makes you one color again and a fresh yep. canvas to start on. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, to be honest with you, like it's, um, I, I'm almost happy about it. <laughs> if that it. makes sense. Because yeah. I feel like, you know, I, 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 I like doing my own hair and makeup. I like doing all that kind of stuff because I have control over it. Well, now I feel like I have control over this, you know? So even if I do shows where Liquid Sunrise is there, I can still take this and I have control over it now. Absolutely. You yeah. know, so if I ever want, if I ever have bad tan, I can fix it. Yeah. Or you your know? girls too. Yeah. And yeah. I had that issue last year at one of the, one of my shows, the tan was just gloppy. There was like splotches and the people backstage were like, oh, it'll be fine when you go on stage. Not a big deal. I was like, like they didn't want to like buff it out or anything like that. Oh, for me. I... And mm -hmm. I got on stage and I was like, all I can see are those, those spots. And I'm like, I freaking told them backstage that that was going to happen. Yep. It happens you know, all the time. You have to advocate for your what you paid for. Uh, yeah. You know, I had a I had a, um, a tanning company backstage that wouldn't glaze me. They're like, yeah. "Oh no, you're going to be fine." I'm like, "I'm top okay. three today. You are going to glaze me." Yeah. I had to go get Bill, one of Tim Gardner's wow. um, people backstage. She's like, "Of course you're going to glaze her. Why are we not glazing the pros right now?" It's just crazy that I had yeah. to like ask for that, <laughs> but. You'll get some people that yep. way. And it happens. And sometimes it it's happens. not even sometimes it's not even the tanning company. Sometimes it's just the specific person that's just Absolutely. being a jerk. Yes. <laughs> you know, but it like goes back to earlier <sighs> in the podcast when I think these are the moments I think to myself, Am I the crazy one? Yeah. You know? Uh -huh. <laughs> am, I paid for a service and they're uh -huh. not willing to give it to me, but am I the crazy one? Yep. That's how I felt last year. So I was like, hmm. But like I said, now I'm like, okay. And then you know, again, going back to like, I know for Japan, they don't have like a host hotel. So I have to get a hotel. I've got, a, I've got a hotel. It's like a mile away from the venue or whatever. So I know I'm going to have to travel, but I know I have control over it now in my, in my own space. And, and, and when you're in a foreign country and you don't know where you're going and all this kind of stuff, I mean, that's, that's, that's a, big, that's a whole a other thing. Mind thing. You yeah. know, so I'm like, this will actually probably make me a lot more, a lot calmer because all I'm going to have Good. to do on show day is go from my hotel to the venue and from the venue to my hotel. And that's it. I don't have to go anywhere else because they have all these like different salons and shit that you have to go to. I'm like, 
I don't know how to speak the language. Is it like at a convention center? No, the, it's the show um, itself. I believe that's basically what it is. It's called okay. something or other gardens. And it's like, okay. it's like a big venue. Like they have all of the shows that they have in Japan in Tokyo are in that venue. So if you ever look okay. at any of the, of the photos, they're all in the same spot. I, but there's I'm no... so excited for you. They create yeah. such a production over Thank there. You. I feel like you're going to have such a good time. I'm so excited. They treat to see your bodybuilders like friggin' rock stars. Gods. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I'm, I can't I'm excited wait to hear about your experience. I can't I know. wait. I'm yeah. so excited. I'm going to be there for like a full week. So I'm like, I'm, I'm excited because I, I lose a day from going from um, Hawaii. I think we talked about this. I lose a day going from Hawaii. So I'm going to stay for an extra day after the show till Tuesday and fly off, fly home from there. Um, so I can actually eat stuff on Monday because the show itself is Sunday. Good. So you're going all the way I'm out there like at least full, enjoy yeah. a day. <laughs> well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go do like sightseeing and stuff during the week, you yeah. know, but I can't eat yeah. anything, you know, I'm going to be this big week. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, know? you can only you can only eat so much of that food when you're not used to it. One right. day after the show will be plenty. But and what I've yeah, heard too is that their sure. food, yeah, I've heard their food is amazing. Like as far as I've like heard that too, clean and fresh and all that kind of stuff too, which I'm excited about that. So it's I've heard fun. that too from Eureka yeah. who who competes out there quite a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it'll be fun. So um, okay, so that takes care of the tanning question. Um, one of the other questions that's that's kind of all encompassing um, is in regard to social media and things like that. So I get this question a lot. I get asked, and probably the best way to say it, where is it? She said, um, did you ever feel pressure to be or act or post a certain way because of being a pro? So I think that's kind of the all encompassing thing when it comes to the social media aspect or just image in general. Um, <clears throat> And she asked me this specifically. She's like, I know you don't care now, but did you ever? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> so I kind of wanted to, to just start off by saying with this whole thing that what you do off, off stage doesn't ever affect you on stage unless you're a jerk. <laughs> like, like, I don't know how else to put that. Um, because people just have an automatic, like there's a human bias, right? There's a human bias to things. So if you're a good person and you're trying to do the right thing about things and, you know, you can be you and that's okay. If you're an asshole and, and you're a jerk to people, then that also, there's going to be the human bias there, right? Yeah. Lack of respect. Beyond that. Yes. Beyond that. I mean, you got to understand having this moral crusade in this particular sport where people think you have to be Miss America doesn't, doesn't exist. <laughs> I, I hate to break it to you, but we're in a sport where the majority of people in it are doing illegal activities <laughs> in order to get on stage. Yes. So check your moral compass is what I'm going to say on that. So, you know, I, I don't judge people for what they choose to do. If you're not hurting somebody else, then have at it. You know what I mean? Um, you know, a lot of people ask about the the social media stuff. They ask about the sexual stuff. You do realize that muscle worship has been around since the beginning of bodybuilding with men, let alone with women. That this is a sport of skin. This is a this is a sport of skin. I mean, it just is what it is. So, no, that's not going to affect you on stage. It's not going to affect you. Um, there are are several people in our sport that have won huge titles that are in the sex industry so that, that do that. So thinking that that's going to harm you, it absolutely will not. Thinking it's going to help you, it absolutely will not. <laughs> it doesn't matter either way. It's a great way to put it. Do what, you, yes, do it what, if you feel morally comfortable with doing what you're doing, that's all that matters. Yes. If you're questioning doing it because you think it might affect your placings on stage, you probably are questioning doing it in, in general. general. Right? So at the end of the day, you need to be true to yourself. You need to be true to what you want. You need to be true to what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with. And I promise you that as long as you're not doing anything that's shady, that you're not doing anything that's hurting other people, it's not going to affect your career in the sport. It's just not. Yeah. Because it's like the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, you can't exactly ask them to have a, enforce a moral code based upon what this entire sport is built upon. Right. I'm just saying. No, like, absolutely. 
Yeah. And on the other end of that as well, you know, there's a lot of people in our sport that are, you know, ex-felons that have been to prison, that have done terrible things in their lives and have turned their lives around and things like that. There are plenty of them that have actual testimonies that do this, that talk about this kind of thing. Perfect example is uh, Mel Chancey. I was going to say Mel you know, Chancey. One of the, yeah. Perfect example. And he turned Big time his life promoter, around. was in prison Absolutely. for many, many years. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, all that stuff. So there is no, like, black mark. You're not allowed to be in this sport anymore. That doesn't that doesn't exist. And this is not Miss America. <laughs> right. It is not. <laughs> we're, we're showing our butts off in thongs, you guys. <laughs> it's a family sport, but it's also gray. <laughs> there, with, with shades of gray. Yeah. <laughs> shades of gray. <laughs> I totally, 50 shades. I didn't mean that, but that's the way it came out. So, but yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I just kind of want to put that, that whole thing to, to rest because I get asked that all the time. Yeah. I get asked it all the time. I know it's because I have a background in this kind of stuff too. And I get that. So people feel comfortable coming to me and asking me and talking to me about this kind of stuff. But I'm telling you right now, it is affect you one way or the other, good or bad. You, and furthermore, if you're an amateur in the sport, they don't even know who you are most of the right. time. You know right. what I mean? So <laughs> it's like, you don't have to worry about that stuff. And here's the other thing, you guys, I said this on my stories today, no female in this sport is making their living from competing. Not a single one, not a single one is making their living from competing now. It may be helping them to grow their business. It may be helping them, you know, grow their brand, their sponsorships, things like that. It's helping in those areas, but it is not putting food on the table. It's not. Right? Again, it can help to build their brand and who they are and everything like that off the stage, but it is not bringing home the bacon. Do no. what you got to do. Feed your kids. Yeah. Bottom I think line. that's a really big misconception that people don't understand is that a lot of the pros are not making money off endorsements and sponsorships. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. the men, the top, top bodybuilders, yes, they are getting mm -hmm. paid out from sponsorships and things like that. From the female side, it's not the same. Mm -mm. And yes, as pro bodybuilders and Olympians, we still have to have a job <laughs> to afford a to compete. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the pro level, you do not have to pay for entry fees, right? Mm -hmm. The entry fees into the shows, but you still have to pay for travel. I still have to pay for mm -hmm. a hotel. I still have to pay for hair, makeup, unless I'm sponsored, which I'm not from a company. Yep. Most of the time, you're not sponsored from hair and makeup companies. Yep. Um, yeah, competing is still expensive for the pros. And I still have to have a J-O-B in order to afford competing. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I think on Reddit, you know, people are always like, well, you know, like everybody's like a coach. You know, we've we've talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, most of the time, like the pros, you know, you're, you, you're doing this day in and day out. So naturally your career has something to do in the sport, whether you're a posing coach, whether you're a coach, whether you own a gym, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. But because you're hobby and your career are aligned and they're fueling each other. That's Correct. the best possible outcome. That's right. It is very hard to find a bikini pro that's working a typical nine to five. Jessica Wilson, let's say, right? She's a mm -hmm. veterinarian. Yep. It is very hard for her. She's been very open and communicative about that, especially at CCTS, which is yep. coming up soon. I think there's uh -huh. only four tickets left. Everybody, That's right. You got, yep, four tickets. Um, yep. <laughs> I like that plug. Thank you. She's communicative <laughs> about how it's very hard to be in a professional um job that is yep. not correlated with bodybuilding and finding that balance or a boss that understands that you have to take five breaks a day to get six meals in and things like that. Yep. But yes, it is it is a very big misconception around, among the pros that we just get all this money once we turn pro and nobody needs to work and everything's free. And no, that is the farthest thing from the truth. Yep. <laughs> You know, we work and, very hard. And our, <laughs> yeah. And even at the top end of these prize purses and stuff, they barely even cover your expenses for the weekend. You know, barely. like, barely. how much did you, how much was your check in Tahoe? Um, I think I got 1500 and then I got 500 for the photo. So two grand. Yeah. I mean, that entire trip cost me about eight. Yep. You know what I mean? When all is said and done. Like, so 
I, I don't do it for the money. If I yeah. get two grand at the end of the day so I can go enjoy a few nights of dinner with my husband in Tahoe, that was worth it to me. But it's yep. definitely not covering the expenses. Yeah. You know, and you just, just look at freaking flights and all that kind of stuff. Like, you, you forget about those kinds of things. Like, the flights alone are thousands of dollars. And yes. then you put on top of that what you're paying for your, you know, your coach, your trainer, your supplementation, your food, all those kinds of things. It's an expensive hobby. Yes. Hobby, guys. Hobby. Hobby. <laughs> and like I said, even the top girls in our sport, not even bikini, when we're talking about like wellness, we're talking about bodybuilding, all the, they have jobs. Yeah. Some of them are influencers. That's what they do for their job. But that's where they're making their money. They're not making yeah. it on stage. They're not making yeah. their money on stage. Nope. You know? Nope. And I agree with you. I don't really care what somebody does for work. I just respect right. work. I respect right. hustle. That's you know, right. somebody needs to go strip three nights a week in order Absolutely. to, you know, that good more, more power to them. It's not going to affect what they do on stage as long as they're a good person, as long that's as right. people respect them, as long as they're not hurting people. And, yep. you know, that's, you know, more people that are hurting others or, you know, actively going out and talking about others or talking about judging panels, that's going to hurt you. That's right. Versus just going out and doing your hustle and doing what you need to do in order to afford the lifestyle and hobbies yep. that you want in this sport. Absolutely. And like I said, I'm like, that's why I have a hard time with people that try to be like the morality police here. I'm like, really? I'm like, you're, you're literally glass houses, guys, glass houses. Yeah. That's There's the unfollow button for that. a reason. Go ahead and hit it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, you don't have to be okay with it. But you don't have to tear that person down because that's no. what they chose to do. Yeah. I'm not asking you to be okay with the way I run my life. That's how I run my life. But maybe I'm not okay with the way you run your life. That You right. know, I'm just going to sit back and do me and I'm not going to worry about you. I was going to say the difference is I'm staying quiet about it. Let right. you do your thing. But for whatever reason, you feel the need to attack mine. Right. That's so right. That's it's hard. Right. It is. It's hard, you know. I'm, I'm dealing with this right now in my personal life of just like, you know, success and, mm -hmm. you know, there's so much success to go around. It's really not about, um, a, a competition at that point. Yes. Everyone can be successful. There's plenty of clients. There's plenty of money to be made. If everybody just focused on what they're good at and staying mm -hmm. in their lane, everyone would be a lot happier and successful. hundred um, percent. But we always get so clouded by what somebody else is doing next to us in the race. And if we all just continue to run our own race, we can definitely find a happier platform mm -hmm. and all be successful together. I don't know. There's yeah. really no other way to say it, but it just the comparison game has to stop. <laughs> Agree. Well, you know, and, the, and the, this is something that myself and Dan talk about all the time in this industry. There's just so many people that are so... Um, they want to hold on to their to their own space and they don't want to give anything up and they don't want to partner with people. Like we've never been in, in a space before where people are so unwilling to partner, right? Yeah. Like <clears throat> I, I was talking, you know, again, talking about Liquid Sunrays, I've been partnered with them for since 2010, you know, like we, we always help each other anywhere we can. Anytime I need help. They were the first, my very first CCTS that I ever did, they sponsored it and they have every year That's since. It's pretty cool. That's you know, awesome. and yeah. then same thing with, with Fit Body Fusion. Anytime that we need help with promoting CCTS, we reach out and say, hey, can you help us out with this real quick? Boom, done. You know, yeah. very, very rare in this industry, which is mind blowing because all it does is help all of us get better. All it does Absolutely. is help all of us get better. There's yeah. no reason. There is no reason why we have to be so in on ourselves and like, no, screw you. I, this is this is mine. You can't have it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's something that to, 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 to be very honest, like I'm learning, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm an only child, you know, I grew up and I did everything alone. I didn't do team sports. That's why I love bodybuilding so much because it, I only had to rely on myself, but especially with joining fit body fusion, you know, Drew and I get that question a lot. Why'd you guys make the switch? Like why be a part of fit body? Because how I feel so supported by yeah. the group of coaches and by Jamie and Greg, who constantly are trying to grow us and make us better professionals. I yep. am a better professional and athlete by joining this team, Fit Body Fusion, right. because I'm surrounded by other people that grow me. And yeah. I think it's a very singular mindset of I'm just going to run my own race and just get there by myself. You know, Greg always says the famous saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I'm yeah. really starting to see that over the last year, that the more of a solid community that I build, 
the more that I propel my own success and it's, and it, nothing is taken away from me. That's right. We're That's only right. sharing the wealth. That's right. Um, so I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm learning to be better at that. Listen, we're in the sport of bodybuilding where, like mm-hmm. I said, it's a very singular sport. It's like one track mind, but if we can kind of open up our horizons and just be a little bit more open to the things that are going on around us or what works for someone else, man, yeah. the things yeah. that we could tap into there. I know. I know. Trust me. I have this conversation with Dan all the time. I'm like, oh my God, this could be so much better if like people would just be open. People would just be open. I'm like, I'm not trying to take anything from you. I'm trying to help us all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to help you. You help me. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, I'm not, yeah. Again, and it's, I don't know. I'm sure there's other industries that are like that too, but I've just never seen it as bad as this industry. I mean, really. I mean, you know, this podcast is a perfect example. You know, I've had the, I've had the lives and stuff going on forever and you just came in and say, Hey, can, can I help? And they'll look at us now. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, of course, let's do this. Right. Like we're better together. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And Ugh. it probably wouldn't be as successful if you were doing it by yourself or I was right. doing it by myself. People love the dynamic. Right. And it wouldn't be the same without you or without each Aww. other. Aww. How cute. <laughs> That's going to be our cover photo. <laughs> I love it. That's definitely a screenshot right there. Yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, how much time do you have? I know you have a, I know you have a, a posing session. Do you have a little bit more time? I have time a posing session in 15. <laughs> oh, so we, we have to wrap it up. I was going to say we have time for more questions or we need to wrap up. We, I we can do one more. Questions. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. So we talked about that. Um, tips. We did that. So this is something we probably could, t- could touch on real quick is I'd love to hear more about your journeys into coaching, into coaching roles, Sean Posey and Jordan Contest Prep. Like what tips and advice can you share for becoming a coach and starting that type of business? So, um, I mean, I can say for myself, I've talked about this before. Um, I was just doing it for myself more than anything else as far as posing and the presentation aspect of it. Uh, And I just had girls come and ask me like, hey, can you help me with this? The same thing with the suits. Like, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Can you help me with hair and makeup? You know, can you help me with this? Like, sure, I can help you with that. You know, not a big deal. So when I started all that kind of stuff, like I was saying before, that, that kind of thing didn't exist. There weren't posing coaches. You know, there there weren't hair and makeup companies at shows. There weren't suit companies. You know, I I said my first suit that I got was from a lady that made ice dancing costumes, you know. That's crazy. And now look at you now. (laughs) I know. There was like one or two suit companies and everybody else got that. Like when Bikini first started, people got their their suits online on random websites and stuff. Like if you remember the old like – it was literally like a bikini with like one stone on it. Yeah. Like (laughs) there was – Do you remember like the old like – what is it? Uh, Was it Tom Hardy? What what was it? The one that had the really – crazy oh yeah yeah, designs yeah and stuff no you're tom no is that what it was i can't even yeah, remember think, but it was I back in the day you're, you're very close i don't think that's, yeah yes. I, th- I think but, that's what it is the like, rhinestones yeah, and all yeah. that yeah yes people were getting getting suits like that you know and like that's what they were like uh sonia gonzalez won the very first bikini olympia and that's basically what she had it wasn't that wasn't what it was but it basically that's what it looked like as far as her suit's wow. concerned so like this stuff didn't exist you know so I started doing it just because people were asking me to. Um, And then it evolved into, okay, the girls that I was helping were winning, you know? So it's like, okay, so she knows what she's doing. Let me go work with her. And it just kept kind of growing from there and growing from there and growing from there. It was not something that I planned. It was just something that kind of started snowballing a little bit. Um, And it got to the point where it was just, it was just a side hustle. And I was, you know, I was a manager of a gym and I had to choose. I was like, if I want this to be anything more than just a side hustle, I have to put more focus onto it. So that's when I went that direction. And that's when I started doing all this business, uh, business stuff and actually made it into something real, you know, Um, prior to that, it just wasn't, it was just, it's just something that I did. And like, uh, you know, myself and also my husband were very, um, I guess imaginative people, you know, we've always got ideas. Sometimes those ideas work, sometimes they don't, but we've, we try them, you know? So we do a lot of brainstorming. We try a lot of things and that's kind of where, you know, Cutie's Conquer the Stage came from. I mean, people don't realize like when we put that together, 
we were sitting there trying to figure out something to do because there were no shows from November until March. And I'm like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do? I'm like, there's nothing, nothing going on. And so we're like, well, you know, these girls really need this presentation stuff. What if we put together a weekend where we did that? So we're like, okay, let's put this, throw this together and just see what happens. We actually got Ashley Kaltwasser was our, one of our main speakers. And so was Becky Clausen. Um, we put it all together, Labrata Nutrition and Liquid Sunrise sponsored it. Um, we put it in a room in a Stabridge Suites. <laughs> and I saw that. Those photos, out. so small yeah. from yeah. where it was it now. sold out. Wow. Yeah, it sold out. And I was like, oh, we got something here. And what people don't realize is at that point, we were struggling. We were struggling hard. We put $50 into Facebook marketing. Wow. It blew up. We had $500 in our bank account at that point. That was it. That's all we had. We were struggling hard. Wow. We threw all of our chips into the, into the middle of the table. And uh, and here we are now. Like like they always say, there's no, there's no big rewards without big risks. And that was a really big risk. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, feel it was, that it was, completely. It was a lot. A lot. And, um, you know, it goes back no, to it, the beginning of what we were talking about. These are all decisions that Drew and I are currently going through right now. Business stuff, right? Yeah. And with with any big business idea, it's 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 big fear, but that means it's also big excitement, right? Yes. There should be should be both. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that's and that's essentially where it all came from. And like it, like I said, it just kept growing from there into what it is today. So, um, it again, when it comes to the journey going into the coaching and stuff, it wasn't anything I had planned. I didn't plan it; it just happened. And yeah. I, I'm very, very thankful that it happened. And it's crazy to see where it is today. And I'm I'm curious to see where it's going to go, you know. Um, but sometimes life just happens, <laughs> and you, you just have to roll with it. Roll with it. And sometimes it becomes a whole lot bigger and better and crazier than you ever thought it was going to be. And that's what happened here. So what about you? Um, so I was already in the space of fitness. I obviously have my, you guys already know, my bachelor's degree in exercise science. So at the time in 2019, when I started competing, I Drew and I had already owned our gym, Pinellas Ultimate Strength House, and I was an in-person trainer. Um, Shortly after I started competing, 2020 rolled around and the world was shut down mm -hmm. and our clients were unable to go into the gym. Obviously, our gym was closed for 90 days. And you can imagine as a business owner how stressful that is. Yeah. Um, you know, how are we going to make money when nobody can walk through the door? So obviously, the idea of online coaching became more and more prevalent. Um so as soon as we shut down, I actually started studying for my nutrition certification uh, through N uh, NASM. Got the certification pretty quickly because I had nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then what I started to do was offer, obviously, online sessions with my clients that stayed with me. But also what I did was I used that opportunity to put now to use this new certification. So I was doing nutrition programming for free with mm -hmm. the clients. Mm -hmm. So they were still paying their same rate. But they were now getting this added caveat, knowing that I was new to it. Yeah. Um, and then that's kind of how I established myself and also was able to practice without accepting funds. Yes. And the more that I did it, the better I got with it. And then I have never had to refer myself, meaning it's always just been word of mouth. And at that mm -hmm. point, so once we got out of 2020, people were like, okay, well, I kind of still want to do this. You know, yeah. I still want to stay on track with nutrition. And I'm actually pretty proud of my clients. A lot of them came out of the pandemic and didn't gain a ton of weight, you know, from being in the house all the time. Right, they yeah. actually had a plan and stuck to something. And I was really proud of that. And then, mm -hmm. um, and I knew that I had something. And at the time, I was not interested in, in, in athletes. You know, I was just focused on lifestyle clients. Um, I wanted to focus on being an athlete myself. I was very new to it. Peaking scared me and all the things. And mm -hmm. um, that developed, you know, me wanting to train athletes and learning how to train athletes developed the more that I studied the sport for myself. Um, I'm definitely a big person on like, I got to feel like I did my research on it to understand it before I feel like I can give it to somebody else. I always have to lay my head down at night knowing that my people are taken care of in the best possible way. And I knew that I wasn't that person at the time. So the more that I started to study the sport for myself and talk to promoters and go and watch shows and understand nutrition and understand peaking and all these things that it takes to get to stage, I was like, okay, I think I'm really 
ready now to take on athletes. And that's also at the time when I started working with FitBody and having that support also from Jamie, Greg, and the other coaches there as well. Obviously, Drew has obviously taught me a ton. And yeah. um, I don't know. I just, I, I, it, it's fun, so funny what you said. I'm, I'm so curious to see how it continues. Mm -hmm. And that's so cool. I got goosebumps as soon as you said that because it's, it's never ending. Yeah. And for a professional or a true business owner, it's never ending. You know, mm -hmm. you don't just open up a business and it's done. It's what's next or how can I keep growing it or what's what, you know, as a person, how do you change and how do you evolve and what do you want to be a part in professionally? Right. Who knows what's coming around the corner, but I know that if I'm involved and if Drew's involved or if other people are involved that are successful and want to grow me, I know we're unstoppable. And that's really yeah. cool. That's yeah. a really cool feeling that it's never ending. Yep. And I've said that too. I was like, you know, even when we, we have hard times, you know, like you're going through the stressful time in business and stuff like that right now, even when we have difficult decisions we have to make. I have this, this underlying, like, as long as our purpose is to be better and our purpose is, is aligned and it's good. And we know that what we're doing is right. And we're doing it the right way. And we want to, we want to make things better. It's going to work out one way yes. or another. It's going to yeah. work out. It may not work out how we wanted it to, you know, it may take a detour, you know, it may end up evolving into something completely different, but it's meant to be that way if the intention is good, right? Yeah. As long yeah. as the intention is good, then whatever comes from it is going to be good, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I think that goes back to what we were saying as far as like the social media thing and stuff like that too. As long as the intention behind it is for good, then whatever that comes malicious. from it, what, yes, whatever fruit comes from it is going to be good. Yeah. If the intention is bad, then you've got a problem. But as long as your intention is good, again, no matter what happens, it may look like a problem at first. It may look like something bad at first, but it's going to be a good thing in the end. It's going to yeah. happen. It's going to, something good is going to come from it. Just hang on tight because it's going to get there. <laughs> it's like, as long as you continue, I say that all the time, like, as long as you're putting in the work every day, as long as you're trying, as long as you're trying to make things better, you're going to get there. You know, yeah. um, the only way you don't is if you quit. That's the only way you don't. Yes. So, Not trying at all. Own your own, failure. <laughs> when you own your own business, you can't quit. That's just, <laughs> it's just, you can't. You, like, you don't get that luxury. Thing. No, I'm like, no. you're the only one. If you don't show up for work that day, there's nobody there that can take your place. Like there's nobody it. there. It's you. That's it. Either you show up or stuff doesn't happen. Or you don't. Right. Yeah. Your business doesn't show up. Absolutely. I can't take a sick day. I can't do that. You know? <laughs> so. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. Well, no. It's the, you know, anybody that wants to open up a business, I always say, buckle up. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's not you're everything your own is... boss, but yes, you're your yeah. own boss. That's you right. Know? And not only that too, you have to think about the people that you're supporting, you know, every time I'm making these big decisions, why it's so hard too, is because I have my staff, I have to think of. That's I, right. There's people that are affected by every choice that I make, you know, and that's any choice that you make in life, there's a, there's going to be rewards and there's going to be consequences no matter mm -hmm. what. And that's what you have to really learn how to, you know, re really deep dive, you know, that's and right. what's going to work for you. But I love what you said. As long as the intent is good, yeah. the intent behind it is good. And if that's really where your heart is calling you, you got to follow it. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. So I think that's a good place to end it off, don't you? Yeah. Good intentions. Number eight. <laughs> Number eight. That's We're crazy. So I know, right? Time goes by so fast, too, guys. That's it does. Like you better enjoy what you're doing because the time goes by really quick. <laughs> like that. <laughs> so thank you for joining us for these last eight episodes. If you've been here, um, if you haven't done so already, like subscribe, comment, comment away because we collect all of the, of the questions as you can see, and we've still got many more that we didn't get to. So, um, <clears throat> so we'll continue to do this as we go along, but I think, um, next week is going to be, you know, Olympia hype. So Olympia hype week next week, because in the following week is Olympia. So, um, I would love to do like an in-person podcast with you, but I know you're going to be really, uh, focused on the actual actual Olympia. So <laughs> I will make time for you. We'll figure out something. You we'll figure out will something. make time for. Okay. All right. I like it. <laughs> I think our listeners would love an in-person podcast. Yeah, cool. I think so. I think it would be fun. Yeah. We should do that and, um, you know, figure it out one way or another. Uh, because I'm, I don't know. I'm there from Thursday till Sunday. So we'll figure it out. Maybe, maybe we, can, and we can maybe do it even Sunday, you know, yeah. when everything's done and over with Same. and we do, do a post-mortem. <laughs> post more to <laughs> recap on the entire weekend all right yeah 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 that might that might be good and then that way you can focus on the actual olympia and then we can do it after i think perfect. that's a good idea perfect yeah awesome 
<laughs> we just made a decision, decision right just, here. Yes. You guys are all hearing it live. Okay. Now we have to be committed. <laughs> We're going to, now we have to. Um, yes. <laughs> Accountability. Yes, absolutely. So I'm going to let you go so you can get to your posing session. Again, thank you guys for joining us and we'll be back again next week. Yes, we will.